Uh, welcome to uh, another video in this uh, short series about the uh, lighting feature of version 4.1 in Fantasy Grounds Unity. And today we're going to be talking about uh, token lights. So we need an image. <coughs> so let's uh, select this one. Um, if we unlock the map, we can see that uh, the enable disable uh, lighting is on. And if we go to our uh, lighting uh, tab here, uh, we can see that token lights is one of the options. Uh, once we've selected this the panel here, uh, is pretty much the same kind of panel as we saw in the last video for the add light. Uh, we've got the same options as far as um, lighting range and fall off is concerned. We've got a behavior and we've got various presets. But we do have a couple of extra buttons, the add remove light, um, and we also have a little uh, thing up here, a little widget up here, which tells us how many lights are actually on the player. So before we can actually add a light to uh, a token, then the token has to be on the map. So uh, let's do that. Let's uh, put Jane on our map here. We can close that for the moment. And now that Jane is uh, on the map, we can start adding lights to her. Um, we can go back to play mode, and if we uh, just look at the uh, player preview from the DM side, we can see the map is completely dark. Um, Jane can see her token, but nothing else because there are no lights on the map, um, and she doesn't have any light sources of her own. So we go back to our lighting and then to the token light. Um, we can set, select one of the presets here. So let's just uh, select a candle. Uh, we make sure that Jane is the selected token. And then we can uh, click on the add light here. And you can see that Jane now has a, a light. If we share this uh, map with the uh, player and have a look at the player view, uh, we can see that Jane now has uh, a candle which is giving off light to uh, a short radius with some dim light uh, beyond that. If we just uh, switch off the... Uh, oh, we've already got token movement switched off. Excellent. Um, if we uh, select Jane then in here and we begin to move her, then you can see that the light uh, from her candle moves with her and lights up the uh, area around about. If we uh, zoom out a bit, uh, we can see that this is the only part of the map that uh, Jane can see. And she can see the, uh, the fog of war has kind of lightened up the room that she's already been in. If we now switch back to the uh, DM view, and uh, let's add uh, a couple of uh, NPC tokens onto the uh, map. Uh, we'll just add a couple of them down uh, to let's shove them here. Uh, and if we uh, go back to the uh, player's view now, um, we can see that uh, Jane can't see those tokens uh, because she they are not within her uh, line of oh, they're not within well they're not within her line of sight, but they're also they're not within her. Uh, lighting range. Um, we will actually have to move pretty much right on top of them because all we have is a candle. But as soon as we do uh, get into the uh, range of our uh, candle, then the uh, token uh, will become uh, visible. And if we move back, um, we can no longer see it. And if we move forward again, we can see both of them. So in order to actually be able to see a, a token, um, not only has it now to be in the token's line of sight, but it also needs to be in the uh, token's light range. So we pop back to the uh, DM screen now, um, and again make sure that uh, we have uh, Jane selected as our token, and we can then uh, remove the light. Incidentally, if we look up here, we can see that Jane's got one of one light sources uh, available to her. Uh, with the token selected we can now remove that light uh, from Jane. If we just click on the delete button we see that the um, candle has now disappeared from, from Jane um, but she can still see the fog of war that she has, where she has been is still 
uh, kind of slightly uh, more visible. And if we go back to the uh, player screen as well now, we can see that the tokens that are literally right beside her, she can't see them because she has no light source anymore. Um, so let's um, we so we we've got various uh, presets here, uh, here uh, for uh, lamps, torches, lanterns. We also have the darkness and light spell, but you're not restricted to just these uh, options. Um, you can uh, create your own light and give the player any kind of light that you like. So in order to set that up, we would first of all go to the uh, color picker. Um, we'd select a color, whatever we want. And then we would uh, select our uh, ranges for bright uh, and uh, dim. Uh, we can play around with the uh, fall off, etc. Um, we can set the behavior and the speed of the behavior. Um, and again, making sure that uh, Jane's uh, selected token, uh, we can add uh, this light to uh, Jane. And now we can see that she has the green light that we have just uh, created. Uh, we can see the range and we can see the flicker and we can see it even uh, clearer uh, on the player's view. And once again, because uh, these two uh, enemies are within her uh, light range, uh, she can see them. Um, and if we again select Jane, uh, make sure Jane's selected uh, and we can move Jane and again the tokens will disappear once uh, she's out or once they are out of uh, her light range. Um, now one issue that um, you will have if you add lights in this way is that if uh, Jane moves on to another map uh, then you'll need to reset uh, her lights uh, onto uh, her token once again on the new map. So the recommended method uh, of adding lights uh, is as follows. First of all we'll uh, again just remove uh, this light from Jane. Um, if we go to our effects uh, tab up here in options uh, we will see that we've got various presets and these presets uh, reflect the same as uh, we find here candle, lamp, torch, etc. Um, and these are set up in exactly the same way and this is the method uh, by which it's recommended that you add lights to a uh, token. So if we wanted to give a uh, Jane a lantern. Uh, we just click on the lantern effect. We can see that Jane now has a lantern. We can also see that an effect has been added onto the combat tracker, uh, giving her uh, a, a, a light, um, in this case a lantern, with uh, a range of, of 30 feet. And if we uh, pop over to the uh, player screen, we can see again that she now can see these two uh, enemies and we can move around and as she does so the light goes with her. Line of sight of course is blocked and the light is blocked by walls etc and as she moves away then the uh, tokens uh, will disappear because they're no longer within the range of her light. Um, so this is the recommended method of uh, adding a light to a token. Um, but you are not restricted to um, just these uh, presets. Um, if you want to create a, a preset of your own, if you go into Options and then go to Token Lights here, uh, you can see that uh, all the uh, presets are already in there, but we can add in a new light uh, of our own. Um, so if we click the Add Item and then just open up this little dialog, and we'll give it uh, a name. Let's give it, uh, let's supposing she's got uh, some kind of magical crystal that throws up light. Um, and we can do all the same things as we can do uh, as we can do in this panel here. So let's give her um, a green magical light. Uh, let's say that it throws a bright light out to 15 and dim light out to uh, 30. Uh, we can add in a fall off figures for both of these uh, values. Uh, from 1 to 100. Uh, we can decide on the animation. We can click through here. We've got flash, we've got flicker, and we've got false, uh, pulse. Um, let's set it to flicker, and we can set the speed of the flicker again from 1 to 100. Let's set it at 50. And then we need to give it a tag. 
um, it suggested that you just give it a single name it can be anything you want but it's easier just to give it a, a single name so let's just call it crystal um, and uh, we'll leave it at that and we can also add in a uh, duration here which is the number of rounds uh, that it's going to last for so put something in there that'll it'll last for a while unless it's some kind of magical crystal or something that only has a limited uh, duration but you can put whatever duration you want in there so now that we have uh, got that in there if we uh, close this and reopen our effects dialog we can see that our crystal is now in the presets and if we um, make sure that we've got a uh, let's get rid of this uh, if we've got oh we cancelled the color there let's do that uh, if we make sure that we've got Jane selected and we can uh, add in her crystal uh, we can go to the effects tab and see that she's got two lights on her now she's got a, her lantern and she's got her crystal uh, if we go to the effects tab and we can remove the uh, lantern and we will see the uh, crystal a lot better um, and if we swap over to the player screen uh, you can see it even more clearly uh, so that's how you can add in uh, a custom effect uh, for your own uh, characters depending on uh, what the situation is etc you can create your own uh, presets and uh, as I say it's recommended that that's the method that you use and that you uh, add lights to a token uh, via this effects menu here in that way if Jane gets moved onto a different map then she will still have all her light sources with her um, and they will work on that map and this also means you can create lights um, on Jane's effects menu just in the same way as you can do with any other effect so if we go to our actions tab um, we can set up a power group here which I've already done um, and we just come in here and do a right click and add effect um, I've already been playing about with this one so let's just delete that one um, and we just go into the spell ability here and we can add in uh, our effect so we can have a light uh, let's uh, say that it's uh, 20 feet uh, let's say it's a torch um, make the uh, target self um, and then this effect is just uh, readily available then you can click on that um, and Jane now has um, a torch which uh, sets out to 20 feet if we remove the crystal one we can see that a bit more clearly and if we uh, go to the player's view we can see it even more clearly um, the parameters uh, here you can add a flicker onto this as well if you wanted to so if we go down to our effect here uh, we can then add in uh, a flicker and we can then add in also a value uh, for that flicker so if we remove this uh, this one and then just uh, add that one um, and you can now see that we've got um, a torch going out and we've got the uh, flicker going uh, as well it's not particularly clear but it is actually flickering probably should have set it to 100 so that's the recommended method uh, by which you uh, add uh, lights to an individual token either uh, use the uh, presets here create your own preset if you like or just create the effect in the uh, characters action tab as you would obviously uh, you can add as many of these as you like uh, and they can be switched on and off in the usual way um, so I think that's it for uh, the token lights. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.